Welcome, everybody, to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. It's so nice to have all of you here. Thanks for tuning in, making us a part of your day from all around the world. We hear from everybody all across the United States and Canada, throughout North America, South America as well. We say hello and our friends watching in Europe and Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, we got you covered. We're approaching almost a thousand episodes in the three years since we turned on the lights here and built Lovety Hall and created the Gym Masters Show Live series, which you guys know plays off my professional work in television and radio and stage and film. And it just continues to be a delight. And one of my favorite things, in addition to, of course, chatting with all of you, our Lovety JMS viewers, is when guests return to the show. We have so many guests who come on the show and we have such a good time. They want to come back when they have new things to talk about, or sometimes they just stop back to say hello to me and all of you. We are very interactive gang, so if you'd like to comment while the show is on and say hello to me and my illustrious guest, making her return visit to the Gym Master Show Live. We love her. We're talking about uh, Lucy Arnaz joining us here. If you want to comment in the Lovety Hall chat room, you can right now. Just subscribe to the YouTube channel where we house these hundreds and hundreds of episodes of our iconic series here and uh, you can chat with each other say hello to each other which i know you guys like to do and you could say hello to us as well we would love that so just subscribe to the channel and it doesn't cost anything and you can be in the lovely hall chat room i see comments already built up everybody's saying hello we really appreciate that so welcome everybody so nice to have you here from all around the world we love it and thanks for all of the comments the messages the tweets the emails telling us how much uh, you've been enjoying our series and everything that we do here. Sort of this positive vibe, bringing back that lost art of conversation, which is something that our guests have always said we're doing, kind of like Cavett, Carson, Regis, but with a modern twist, modern flair, and modern vibe. If this is your first time here, I welcome you. Stick around. Every show is something unique and something quite special. And speaking of special, as I mentioned, the one and only Lucy Arnaz is back with us here and we're very excited because she is uh, gonna be on the road she's got more shows that she's doing which is really exciting we're also going to get an update on other cool things that she's working on she's got some things that are brewing that uh she's toying with so uh we'll hear about that but i want to let you know that in the New York area, for those of you in the New York area, she's going to be performing at 54 Below coming up in July. And we're very excited about that. And yep, I've got my tickets. We are going. We're, we cannot wait to get there. She puts on an extraordinary show. If you have been to her shows, you know what I'm talking about. The show itself that's coming up is Lucy Arnaz, I Got the Job, songs from my musical past with, of course, the incomparable and her dear friend, music director Ron Abel. Now, the performance is going to be from July 19th to the 22nd, and the performance on the 22nd is going to be live streamed as well. So for those of you who, and again, she puts on this is when she was at the Purple Room, Palm Springs, another fantastic venue as well. Let me tell you, uh, the last time I saw her, we were going to see her last year at uh, 54 Below, but then she had to pause on, you know, the events, uh, obviously, because of, uh, you know, the health situation with the leg, which is better than ever now. And uh, the last time we saw her on stage, you know, I've seen her socially. We have some mutual friends, David Freeman and Sean Moniker and others, but uh, was at the Kate, the Catherine Hepburn Performing Arts Center, where we just saw Melissa Manchester, actually, a couple of weeks ago. It, she puts on such an incredible concert event. It really is an experience when you see Lucy because it's stories, it's humor, it's the banter between her and Ron and, um, and the audience. I mean, she's, it's like you're talking to a friend. She gets into these incredible stories. She works the audience beautifully. And of course her fabulous voice and the songs it's meticulously prepared, but it feels so warm and so comfortable when you are visiting with uh, Lucy Arnaz. Want to tell you a bit about this particular show that is coming up at 54 Below. Back by popular demand after the sold out 54 Below solo 
debut, celebrating a life on stage, Lucy Arnaz, of course, who started Pippin and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. And of course, they're playing our song. Also, of course, you know who her, her mom and dad are, Lucio Ball, Desi Arnaz, her brother, Desi Arnaz Jr. Of course, that is uh, legendary information. But she is returning for I Got the Job, Songs from My Musical Past. And that's going to be really fantastic. So you want to get your tickets quickly because they are selling out quickly. Uh, from her very first role at 14 as the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland to her grandmother hanging upside down on a trapeze while singing about the preciousness of life in Pippin. Did you get a chance to see her uh, on Broadway doing that? We did. And as a matter of fact, this is on stage after she was hanging upside down. <laughs> She looks pretty good for somebody who was just hanging upside down, right? I think my mom was with me that trip and she got a chance to uh, meet mom. And mom, of course, was uh, bowled over when uh, she met Lucy. But this was right after that. This actually was at the Kate. That's one of my favorite pictures. That's That one is, uh, that's a golden shot there, a money shot. But uh, when she was in Pippin, it was absolutely incredible. And that was just such a a wonderful time for her and for everybody. Lucy and musical director Ron Abel, who is again a joy himself and a multi-talent, they offer audiences this phenomenal concert sharing stories and songs that Lucy has long been known for. And that's what's wonderful are these terrific antidotes, these terrific stories. Uh, and there's a great shot going back with um, Lucy and with Ron, you can see Ron there on the piano. Uh, they have just such a wonderful friendship and a wonderful working relationship as well. And again, they play off each other beautifully on stage. All kinds of fond stories, memories, antidotes about her co-stars and directors, musical collaborators. Lucy offers iconic songs, hidden treasures from some of Broadway's greatest shows and a look at the backstage magic it takes to create them. It's a wonderful evening honoring the great American musical theater, and it's not to be missed. As you know, of course, she began her long career in the recurring role in the television program, The Lucy Show. And at 15, she became a series regular on Here's Lucy, and she later started her own series, The Lucy Arnaz Show, on film, of course, as we've mentioned. Now, Lucy was a guest before, and on that episode, we delved in deeper into her career and growing up and the whole bit. Uh, so you can see that episode still archived here on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Check that all out. It was really terrific. On film, of course, Lucy has co-starred in The Jazz Singer with Neil Diamond, Sir Lawrence Olivier, as well as starring in several made-for-television movies, including Who Killed the Black Dahlia and Down to You. On the stage, of course, Lucy created the role of Kathy in the West Coast premiere of Vanities at the Mark Taper Farm in Los Angeles before starring as uh, Gittle Mosca in the first national company of Seesaw alongside the one and only Tommy Toon. Of course, Lucy's Broadway credits include so many. Uh, they're playing our song, Lost in Yonkers, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and Pippin, as we mentioned. And uh, Lucy's husband is the extraordinary and brilliant actor and writer, Lawrence Luck and Bill. And uh, they formed... Our Luck, Our Luck Entertainment, which is a film and television production company. And together they produced the documentary, Lucy and Desi, a home movie, which honored that actually garnered an Emmy. And during her distinguished career, Lucy received numerous accolades, including a Golden Globe nomination, a Theater World Award, Chicago's famed Sarah Seidens Award, and just, you know, the heart and minds and love of everybody. Uh, people just love Lucy. And there's a reason why. She's just the real deal. You know what I mean? She's a sweetheart of a person. She's open. She's real. She's authentic. She's funny. And guess what? <laughs> she's probably like, okay, Jim, that's, that's quite a bit. <laughs> Bring me on. Roll out that carpet. We're going to do that. She's a dear friend. She really is a joy. You're going to want to go to the concert and let's welcome her live from her beautiful home in Palm Springs, California. Wait till you see the lighting, the background. It is stellar. Here is Lisa. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Hello. There. <laughs> What's left to say? <laughs> you have said everything I've ever done in my entire life. I said, so all I can say now is, 
goodbye and thank you. No, Did you do the dishes? Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was. Wow. Okay. Well, thank that's, you. That's the short what list. Intro. That, that is the short list. Well, it's yeah, always okay. an honor and a pleasure because, you know, you're a busy person. You got a lot going on. And I know a lot of people, you know, pull at you in a lot of different directions. So the fact that you take time to stop by and as soon as I asked you, you're like, you just tell me when and where, Jim, and I'll be there. I really think that's so beautiful you. of you, Lucy. Yeah, it really it's is. Nice to be asked. It's nice. Nice to talk to you again. That pink top is fantastic. Why, thank you. Wow, that's really popping today, huh? So as I told Lucy, she's the last time when she was here, it was the same location, her beautiful home there. That is such a sweet spot where you are with the lighting mm. even coming off the ceiling. And it's really fantastic. Huh? Yeah, I said there's no ring light here. It's just light from outside. I put like a little shade down to sort of, you know, make it not too bright, but... Uh, in about an hour, it'll be dark and you won't be able to see me at all. <laughs> no, we'll nice. just come down slowly, yeah. right? Slowly, I'll just be like, can't find me. Wait, Jim, are you still there? Yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, for those who are watching, you are there in Palm Springs and uh, you had uh, been in New York and then Connecticut. And uh, for those that didn't realize that you're in Palm Springs, what brought you out to Palm Springs? You know, I, it, mystical. Something mystical happened because... It never occurred to me in a million years I would end up living in Palm Springs and be as happy as I am. I grew up here as a kid. It was fun. Yeah. And my, my mom and dad built a house in Thunderbird, in Rancho Mirage here. And then I've come back and forth to do, you know, shows and things. Uh, but really, it was almost 40 years we lived on the East Coast and raised all of our children there for the most part. And my husband is a little bit older than I am. And he just finally went, you know... I don't know about the sliding and the slipping and the snow plowing. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. So we thought about where could we go? Where would be warm? And we X'd out the idea of Florida. It's not really us. We've lived there on and off. You know, apartments didn't like that. Don't really know anybody in Tucson or now we do, of course. You yeah, know, of course. Callaway lives here. I didn't know her then. That's um, right. And so we thought we were out here. And I thought it, David Zippel lived here and Chris Marlowe and Barry Manilow and Lorna Luft and lots of people that I knew. And my, a lot of people were moving here from New York even. And um, we thought maybe we should rent and just see what it feels like. So we, we rented a house for a few months, but before the four months was even up, we had already bought a place. We loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And um, it just felt right. It's our third act, if you will, in our life. And uh, we're not retired. We're far from retired. But this is a great place to be. And they have a terrific little airport. Whenever we need to go anywhere, we can get there very easily. And I just, uh, we, we lucked out. We got an absolutely beautiful house and uh, with a view to just covet. And I love being here. Just love it. Love it. I know. That view that you have is extraordinary of the mountains and all, right? Huh? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a great place to live. Great people, very doable. You know, even at the height of the season, it's not so crazy with traffic. It's just, I had almost 40 years, as I say, of the city and New York and the schlepping back and forth and the Merritt Parkway and learning how yeah. to ride the subway. And I conquered it. You know, I know how to do that. And I'm happy. And when I'm there, I'm thrilled. I'll be very thrilled to go back in July and do my shows. But I'm very happy living here. And yeah. my daughter, Kate, with my first grandchild, JD, they live here now in Palm Desert. They moved here during the pandemic and, and lived with us for a while. And then um, they said, well, maybe we'll rent. And then they rented and then they bought. Wow. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Isn't that great to have them right there like that? You get yeah, to see. my other my other grandchildren, my my two other ones from my son, our, our son, Joe, uh, live in Connecticut. So yeah. I, that's quite quite a ways away. But we're going to see them very soon and spend about 10 days there with them. So very oh, soon. that'd be nice. You're going to tie that into when you come yes, to right. the area I'm for. finished with 54 below. Oh, uh, we're going to go up there and, and hang out with them for a while. While you are enjoying life, the two of you are. Look at this yeah. shot. Huh? There's Larry. <laughs> I wear an awful lot of hot pink, I guess. <laughs> I'm very calm spring. Quite nice. <laughs> You guys have been together how long now? It's been tomorrow. It'll be 43 years. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. What well, happy anniversary Thank to you. you. Wow, June that's 22. fantastic. Yeah. 1980, wow. June 22nd, we got married and uh, 43. How did, how did you meet? We met at Joe Allen. 
You did. Uh, in between shows, he was doing chapter two, Neil Simon, and I was doing there playing our song, Neil Simon. Yeah. And we had a mutual friend who was going into his show and I was having lunch with her, Marilyn Redfield. And I was about to leave and she said, oh, I have to stay, uh, I'm meeting my co-star and he's gonna sort of give me some help on these scenes because I didn't get much rehearsal and blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, well, I'm, and she said, well, you know him, don't you, Lawrence Luckinbill? And I went, yeah, I know who he is, but I don't know. She said, oh, he's such a lovely guy. He's so handsome and he's so funny, but he's right now, he's very depressed. He's going through a terrible divorce and he has two children. And so he's, we should, you should stay, cheer him up. Invite him to your matinee idols thing you do on Saturdays. That would be fun. Okay. So I hung around and in walked this devastatingly cool looking guy that I really couldn't take my eyes off of. He just was so different on so many levels from anybody I had been with or seen or been married to. Um, and um, we were friends because I realized he really was going through a terrible divorce and I had been in a relationship with somebody who was on the rebound, if you know what I'm saying, very dangerous. They just want to fall in love real fast and be told they're fabulous. And then they take a cab. It's like, well, where'd you go? You know, and, uh, <laughs> so I didn't want to do that. And I said, so, okay, you know, I'm just going to be a friend. I invited him to the matinee idols, I D L E S where we met in between shows on Saturday. And, uh, I think that was the secret. We let each other warm up. He went and fell in love, as I just predicted, with two other women in a hurry and left them both. One he almost married. So I'm glad I wasn't one of them. And uh, and then we started dating. And it only took a, 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 two dates before we went, oh, OK. Oh, boy. All right. So mm. here we are. And we never looked back. That's so beautiful, huh? Wow. So cool. It's pretty it, cool. He's a great find. I'm a very lucky lady. And I'm sure he would say the same about you. He better. he better. Is he listening, Larry? <laughs> He's not. He's in the other room watching, making sure the phone doesn't ring. That's it. Keeping the coast clear. Uh, are you just going to have a nice, quiet dinner? Or are you going to go out for the anniversary? Come out again. Happy anniversary. I That's don't so think cool. we're going to do anything special because we have planned a lot of special things. We are going on this Rome cruise and I'm not working on the cruise. We're actually paying for the cruise uh, in, in August, the end of August nice. uh, in, from Rome all the way down through Greece and Sicily and then back up and to Rome again on this brand new, beautiful celebrity beyond. And we're looking oh, forward yeah. to that. So that's going to be kind of our gift to each other, I guess this year. And uh, you know, what? Well, we're really happy and, when we can stay home, do the work we have to do during the day. And then I throw something together for dinner. We put, you know, trays together and go into the bedroom, put our feet up and watch some wonderful streaming show. We got in the habit of doing that during the pandemic and just loved it so much that unless we have company, we almost never eat at the dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. So we've been seeing lots of wonderful shows and, you know, we're watching this great thing now called shrinking with mm. Harrison. Ford and Jason Siegel. It's oh, yes. Wonderful, right. Wonderfully written shows. But, you know, we get hooked on all these things and then we go into sadness when they end and we have to find something new. So, so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. So do you have a specialty? What's your specialty in the kitchen? What do you like to whip up? I uh, know I I'm very, you know, I'm all over the place. I collect recipes. I actually not only in books, but on TikTok or whatever. And I save them and I write them out and I, I try them. During the pandemic, we had sort of test kitchen, luck and build test, test yes. kitchen. And I came up with a couple of great things I wanted to continue. Great chicken dishes and great beef dishes and some vegetarian things. And, and, uh, and then sometimes I went, okay, we're not making that ever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry, that was a complete disaster. And he goes, that yeah, was it wasn't great. <laughs> but I'm brave. The other day I had um, a bunch of friends over because uh, somebody was going away. And I had a brunch for mostly people I didn't know because they were friends of his. And I tried two TikTok recipes that I'd never made before. What am I, crazy? <laughs> and one was like a, 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 what was it? a French toast casserole, like with blueberries. Oh. It was sort of a blueberry bread pudding <sighs> French toast. Wow. And the other was a sheet cake of eggs and cheese and stuff, you know, like cheese Thing. I don't know <laughs> for a lot of people. Cause what are you going to make when you have 10 people at your house? You can't go like, how do you like your eggs? You know? <laughs> so I made these two dishes and they came out so great. I was like, oh my God. 
I can't believe I, first of all, that I even took the chance. That you took a chance. To something I've never cooked before for complete strangers. Yeah. I, I, like, to, I like to live dangerously. You just came back from a safari in Africa not that long ago. Maybe folks dangerous. might not know that, right? Nice yeah. little segue there. Tell us, what was that like, Lucy? This was this wonderful group called Craft Tours, run by a terrific guy, my new best friend, Jim West. I like everyone named Jim. I tell you, the Jim is the thing, yeah. And Jim was a performer years and years ago, and then he was a cruise director for a long time. And then he went, no, I'm going to start my own tour company. And he has tours. You go online and see craft tours. They go everywhere in the world. Everywhere. They have so many tours, it's ridiculous. There's a lot of people working for him. But he does this one kind of autograph tour where they have someone who's well-known, and it's a small, very... VIP kind of tour. You get to go out with that person, get to know them. There's a Q&A night. There's a, I do a show. They do a show, whoever the person is, does a presentation or a show, whatever it is that they do. And, uh, and they pay you very well and they fly you to wherever and put you up in a beautiful hotel. And I was offered this engagement. And I said, well, where is it? Where do we go? And he goes, where would you like to go? What? Mm. Really? Wow. So yeah. he said, well, go on our website and look at all the tours we do and let me know where you want to go. And I have never done a safari and I've never been to Africa. My husband's been several times. He's worked in Africa. He taught in Africa. And I said, I want to go to Kenya. You have a tour to Kenya and you do eight safaris and there's all this. You get to go to the David Sheldrick mm. Elephant Orphanage, which wow. I already am sponsoring five of those elephants. Are you really? The staff Center. Yeah, I always have. And so that was what I picked. And I took Ron Abel. And I, because they pay for your musical director or whatever. And the two of us went a 13 and a half hour flight from New York. Yes. Long trip to get all the way to Africa, but so, so worth it. The people, forget the animals, which was already beautiful and fantastic and amazing. The people, the Kenyan people are just the best. I fell in love with everybody I met. We started a scholarship for a school in Nanyuki for the, some of the kids that couldn't afford to go there next year. Just, That's it wasn't great. that expensive. I'm not tooting my horn. You'd be surprised how little money it really is for one semester, but how they just don't have it. Nice. And um, like it changed my life. I came back at an entirely different human being. So that was fant fantastic. And of course the safaris were amazing. I took a zillion pictures and videos. I don't know what to do with them. I guess I'm gonna have to put them all together and make some sort of a something yeah. to website i don't know right something look back at it imagine you yeah, know it's pretty I, I would have, yeah absolutely i would definitely do that i would imagine too probably 13 hours on a plane you know with all the peanuts you probably had for 13 i don't hours. eat nuts i didn't need I was gonna say the last thing you'd want to do with elephants is give them peanuts <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, the only disappointing part was that I got, oh, I had been so ready to go to the Sheldrick just to, because you can feed the elephants, you know, and give them the bottle of milk and yeah. you have to spend, they were going to give me a whole extra day with the elephants so I could touch them and play with them and all this stuff. I was really looking forward to that. And when we got there, Sheldrick said, well, because of COVID, we aren't letting people do that anymore. Mm. You can't feed them because mm -hmm. your hands could be full of who knows what. Right. And they don't want the elephants to get sick. Hmm. Isn't that wild? So right. I was like, okay, got right. it. Right. Okay. So I just stood as close as I could and took pictures and it was fantastic. Now you're headed to Ireland too, which is exciting. Ireland is next year with the same group, Craft yes. Tour, June 2024. Again, small VIP tour, maybe 20 people, 25 if, if he wants to stretch it, if it really feels like it has to be. And um, there are tickets are going already, So, I, but I think there's maybe 10 seats left. And it's a gorgeous tour of Ireland. Mm. I've never been. And Larry and I, my husband Larry and I said, that's where we want to go. So he said, okay, that's where we're going to go. And I'll be doing my show again with Ron again and a Q&A just like before, but it'll be our trip to Ireland. And so mm. um, if you want to go on craft tours and look that up, I will put, um, I'm not sure it's there. I'm not sure it's up there, but I think it is on my own website. On your site. Um, it might be there already, but I'm excited about that. That'll be fun. Do you know where you're going to be visiting? What parts of uh, Ireland? Well, there's eight places. We're just, wow. we're, it's like a 12 day tour. We're just, we yeah. never stop. And I know my husband's family is from Ireland. I mean, 
a long time ago, his mother's side of the family. Yeah. You know, he really wants to go to Cork. Yes, and, sure. Uh, County and Cork. do a lot of the castles and things. But Larry wants to see the theaters and see where the great Irish poets lived and wrote and yeah. stuff like that. He's got a whole agenda that he gave Jim. Yes. We have to go here. We have to go there. We're good to go. I'm just going to go along and love every minute of it. I don't care where we go. And there's ancestral on your mother's side, right, from Ireland? Going a long, all the way back? long time yeah. ago. I mean, her family goes back nine, well, now with me and my kids, I guess it's 10, 12 generations of America. And they came over on the Mayflower. I'm mm. not joking. Really? They, they are related to people who came over uh, on the Mayflower. So before that, it was English, Irish, a little bit, little bit of French. But I don't know. That's many, 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 many moons ago. How's everybody doing? The family, the kids, everybody's doing well. Thank you. Thank you for asking. So far, not everybody's happy, working, healthy. And uh, I, my kids are great. My grandchildren are great. I have three beautiful grandchildren, as I mentioned. And um, so far, so good. Yeah, they made it through the pandemic, you know, horrible as it was. They both had tiny little babies. My daughter and her husband, my son and his girl, and their babies were all born right after the pandemic started or just wow. before, right during. Yeah, right. And so it's just those kids and them in a tiny little apartment for two years, mostly. Just, can you imagine? I mean, the fact that they're even still together, these people, is a miracle. <laughs> it's hard enough with a with a baby and but, then a uh, toddler and, oh, my uh, God. Tight quarters, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was very, they, then they made it through and, and Joe had a little, a girl and my daughter had a boy a month apart. Wow. And then Joe and Krista had a little boy. So wow. we have two boys and a girl and it's great. Wow. But not the 50 million viewers on CBS, I would imagine, huh? <laughs> it would be so much healthier for those kids that it's not. To actually not have that. Exactly. And your brother, Desi, he's doing well, isn't Speaking he? Speaking of that boy who was not born on the show and who everyone thought was little Ricky. Was and little Ricky. Been crazy all his life. He is very fine and well and healthy and living in Vegas, outside of Vegas, where he's lived for the last 135 years. And some crazy bunch of fruitcakes or <laughs> bait click people who want to catch you and, you know, spam your Internet um, started this horrible, terrible rumor that he wasn't that he wasn't with us anymore. I know. And I started to hear these. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your brother. What happened? And I literally I called him. I said, I'll get right back to you. And I called him. I said, Desi, are you alive? <laughs> he said, yeah, why? <laughs> just checking. Because everybody says you're gone. And I just want to make sure you're still here. So he's fine. Thank you very much. My brother's fine. That's fantastic. Crazy stuff on the internet, huh? I think they want you to click on it. And then something bad's going to happen when you click on whatever the story is. They're going to get information. They're going to get something. They're not yes. Gonna... Yeah, yeah. Phone number, so security. Exactly right. So everything is going well and you've you made it through the crazy times of the last few years as best as you could. And of course, you had the show that was going to be last year and then a little bit of a four years ago. Wait, it's it wait. that long ago already. Four That's right. It's been that long. It was, it was July ish. My birthday time originally wow. uh, in 2019. Yeah. And they said to me at 54 Below, this show's great. We'd love for you to bring it back. Yes. Exactly the same show. Can you bring it right back? I was I was like, no one's ever asked me that before. That's fantastic. Really? Yes. They said, yes, please, as soon as possible, because we could have sold out for another four nights. I was, I said, okay, sure. Yeah. So they booked it like a month later, and I had it ready to go. And then uh, it was like October, I think, it's something like that. Yeah. And then- they called and said, you know what? We got an offer to have a whole show take over the whole week, and they're giving us a ton of money. Can we bump you like just a few months, right, like right after the holidays or something? And I went, yeah, sure, of course. It's up to you, whatever. Well, that was 2020, March, and there went that. And then they, th they thought they could bump it like into, you know, the Christmas season. And then, nope, not yet. And then we rebooked it again for – July of last year. And then I hurt my leg and I had to cancel everything that I had just gotten back to do, which was unbelievable. Uh, like after two years 
of sitting here waiting to go back to work and I finally get going again. And then I really hurt my knee so bad that I had to have a knee replacement. And uh, so I canceled everything again. And now I'm just going back to work. We're actually, we've done several concerts in the last few months. And I'm gonna do one more at 54 Below. And then I have three months off before I start up with all those rescheduled concerts from during the pandemic, which, you know, they don't reschedule them right away usually. It's like a year later because everybody's trying for those dates now, everybody who's been out of work, right? Exactly. Bumped and yeah. changed and yeah, switched. So you've been doing well, you've been going to the physical therapy and all? Yep, yep, yep. My leg is doing really well now. I mean, I if I sit too long, it takes a while to get moving again. You know, I'm, I'm not tap dancing yet, but I'm good. I'm good. I, I was planning on doing the second leg. Uh, mm. And that's why I don't have a lot of dates right now because my I had canceled enough to do the first leg, repair the first leg, do five or six dates. Then in March, I was gonna do the second leg. But after how hard it was to rehab number one, I thought, nope, not gonna put myself through that again right now. My other leg is just fine, thank you for now. I'll get through and I'll do it. If I have to, I'll do it in a couple of years or something. So she's talking about her leg, folks, not the second leg of the tour. No, this is a <laughs> knee replacement. Oh, all the fun things you can do. Get a, go get a knee replacement. I tell you. Fun. <laughs> you love it. Let's see. If it's a choice between a knee replacement and veneers, what would we pick? <laughs> go with the veneers. Get a root canal. Get a Anything. root. Even <laughs> Have a baby without anesthesia. <laughs> Don't put a knee replacement. Are you laid up basically for a long time where you can't get out of the bed and move? No, no, God, no. They get you out of the bed the day you have the knee replacement. You're walking around. I walked up two stairs, everything. It's not that. They want you to move it. Motion is lotion. But um, it's just with me, everybody's different, I guess. But with me, it's just my leg was looking at me like, why did you do this? This is, really hurts. And um, it just took a long time for the scar tissue and the bending and all of that. And I've been at it nonstop for seven months. But I'm there now. I'm getting I'm getting really good now. So it just That's took a lot longer. The people who tell you the truth will say, you know, it's really like a year before you feel normal again. I said, oh, thanks now that you told me that. Because everybody else prior to that, oh, you're going to be so happy. It's the best thing you've ever done. It's like three, four months, you're going to be right back doing what you're doing. Lie. That's <laughs> not true. If anybody tells you that, don't believe them. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> it's not real. Fake news. No, That's... no, no, no. Mm. So the show that you have coming up, for those who aren't familiar, tell us about it. What can people expect? I sort of teased it a little bit in the introduction. You, but you, you said a lot. But you, you, know, you put on a fabulous show, and you, you're so warm you and engaging with the audience. And you weave in the music with the humor, with the stories. And, and when people leave... They want more, which is a beautiful thing, Lucy. Well, that's very sweet. Um, all of my shows, I've been doing this concert stuff for over 30 years, believe it or not. And I love it. Uh, when I'm not doing Broadway or something else theatrical, uh, I'm out doing concerts and I really love it. I love working with Ron. When I'm lucky, I get Ron. He's very busy these days. So yeah, yeah. I, I just got another date for April and I had to call him first and say, you're not busy on that date, are you? Like, because sometimes he's off with Ben Jones or some other fabulous. Wasn't he just performer. doing something with Marilyn May or I think? No, but Marilyn. Oh, God bless her. My Ooh, God. Another, <laughs> huh? Can't even go there. She's so amazing. What a master class and everything. Yeah. But generally, we just do songs that we like and we call it something like, you know, An Evening with Lucy Arnaz. And we put the show together with the stuff we want to do. And depending on, you know, whether it's enough money to have a full band or was it just going to pay for a trio or just maybe me and Ron? It depends, right? What the venues can afford. And I just pick songs. But I was putting an idea out there. I said, you know, I feel like I could do a show based on all the musicals that I've done over my entire life, not even just recently, but like from high school on and take a look at how lucky I've been to work with the people that I've worked with and the incredible stories. And so that's what I did. Cause I said, if it wasn't for those musicals, I wouldn't be in doing concerts. I mean, that's what started me. And so we crafted a show called, I got the job songs from my musical past. And it, that's what it is. It's me sort of showing you how I got here and why. And 
I don't do every little, every song I've ever done and every play, I, I skip a lot of stuff, but the highlights and the things that, you know, would make a good show. And sometimes I sing songs from a particular play that I didn't even sing in the play. Somebody else sang it, but I have a reason for wanting to sing it. So it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's very eclectic and there's some funny stuff and some very touching memories. And I, it's, I'm very proud of this show. It's the most authentic show probably that I've, that I've ever done. Cause every bit of it is not something I have to make up in order to intro some Julie Stein song. It's something that actually was true and actually happened. And I just made a CD actually uh, live from the purple room. And it ended up being a two disc CD, which surprised me, but I found it wasn't going to be a CD just with music. I really couldn't cut the live stories because they're the reason I sing the song. So it's pretty cool. It, and it just finished it. I will be uh, able to sell it probably starting next week. Cause I finally have enough of them to send to people. That's fantastic. What was that process like putting the CD together? It was great because Michael Holmes at the Purple Room recorded the show for me. And I sent it to my son, Joe Luckinbill, who is a music producer and very good. He produced uh, my other CD uh, live from the Nico, Feinstein at the Nico. And he's a musician, he performer himself he's, too. He's, yeah, He's a musician, and, but he's a wonderful producer, music yeah, producer. Yeah. And he's got a great ear. And um, he was lucky. This time we had a couple of tracks when he did the Nico. It was only one track and it was Ron playing, Ron's vocal, my vocal, audience, ambiance, everything on one track. And somehow Joe was able to make it sound like we had a 16 track recording. It was amazing. But this time he had a couple of tracks to work with and I just sent it to him and I made a couple of notes like, you know, uh, this night I forgot to do, say this and it's a better intro to the song, use that take because we got two nights mm. and uh, turns out I only had to do that twice. It really is almost all opening night, which in and of itself is amazing because it was my first show back after the pandemic. So it really is a very emotional and very funny, like I forgot how to do any of this stuff. <laughs> Even the mistakes are funnier than if I'd done it right, you know? So yeah, it's, it's called uh, Lucy Live at the Purple Room and it's I Got the Job Songs from My Musical Past. That's so fantastic. Yeah. What's it like when you're on stage? Because you've you've been on stage so much of your life and television and film and all, but you really have a love affair with the stage, don't you? I, I, I really like um, performing live. Yeah. I like being in it with an audience. It's scary and it's magnificent and it's it keeps you on your toes. It makes you have to bring your A game every single time because there's not going to be anybody who's going to be able to edit you and make you look better. You know, um, it's all about what you're doing right then and there. And there's yeah. something, it's a high wire act, you know, it's trapeze time. And right. I love, that. I've always loved that. I've always loved live audience shows and traveling the country and seeing different places. I, I love that too. Ron Abel is a great hang you know, to be with. He's great fun. Hello, how, Ron. There you how, are. How'd you guys meet? You've had, like I said, of this dear, long friendship. 33 years ago. 33. Joyce Bullifant, wonderful actress. Joyce, yeah. Friend of mine, was yeah. Um, taking care of this, this not-for-profit school called the Landmark School in Los Angeles. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. And uh, it's, it's a school for dyslexic children. And they were putting on a show with their yearly presentational recital. And she called me desperate. She said, oh God, Lucy, uh, we're putting on this show and I've been rehearsing these kids for a week and a half and we're doing this big tap number with top hat and tails and my God, I just don't think they can do it and I just don't think they can do it. They don't know their right foot from their left. And I went, it's a dyslexic school, Joyce. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. That's, that's, anyway. That was a very good Joyce Boulevard. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't even begin to click. Just Joyce's voice is like that. And so she somehow convinced me. I had other plans that night. I was supposed to go to this big event and she just begged, fine, I'll go, I'll do it. Jesus, what do I have to do? I'm gonna send my musical director over to your house tomorrow. Is that okay? Tomorrow morning, eight o'clock, whatever. Sure, fine. Ron Abel walked in. Big, tall guy, long, crazy blonde hair. What? 
And he sat down and played our piano. And I went, wow, okay. And he was funny. And his ideas were arrangement and what to do. And then when I went to rehearse, I saw him single-handedly writing out all these charts for the four or five piece orchestra that they were gonna have. Like I never saw anybody work so hard and so easily. It just was crazy. And I got an offer to go to Sicily and do a show. And I came over to him and I said, do you wanna go to Sicily? That's how it happened. And he said, oh, what, when? And I told him and he said, I'm supposed to be in China. But then he checked and he said, I guess I could. And it was a 100 celebration uh, of Irving Berlin's music for, I mean, his 100th birthday. And it was a celebration of Irving Berlin music. So we put together a 90 minute show that appeared at the Teatro Verde in Sicily. Mm. And it was everything good that he ever wrote squeezed into 90 minutes. And I had three dancers and a four piece band and we flew to Sicily and we did this show. I'd never done a show in my life. I'd never done a nightclub act in my life, but I was offered this opportunity and I took it. And when I got home, we had offers already. Can you do it here? Can you do it there? After a year, it wasn't Irving Berlin's birthday anymore. So we <laughs> a little bit out of here and we put in a little Cy Coleman and a little Gershwin and 33 years later, I work with Billy Stritch. I work with Ted Firth. I work sure, with yeah. Michael Orland. But Ron is like my soulmate. And um, I just, I love his arrangements. I, I love being with him on stage. We, we practically breathe together now, you know? I never have to worry if he's going to go with me if I do something different, and I always do. Uh, he's just really good at that. And I knew that when we did our show, the first one, that Sicily show, when we auditioned dancers, and they came in with, you know, crappy little lead sheets that they put on the piano but he made that sound like it was a 10-piece orchestra playing mm. for them. and i thought this guy is unique and he is he's he's unique he's as good as they get i'm lucky uh it's really a wonderful relationship and you can see that you know when you guys are on stage you, mm. you see the love for one another and it's very transparent what is it like when you're putting the shows together you and ron what's that process like He's he's um he's hard to to uh, please really, and I like that. He'll go no 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 no. I don't think that'll look that way. And I either go oh you're, yeah you're right, or I'll go why? What do you mean? Why not? And then he'll because I don't think you have a thing. And blah, 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 blah. And I go well listen look, look at this. And then he goes oh I see what you're trying to do. I mean he he makes me you know convince him about stuff. And and lots of times I'll say I don't want to do that song. Eh, that song is just. And then he goes how about we do it this way? And he comes up with an arrangement like Hey Look Me Over. Our arrangement of Hey Look Me Over. It's on you can see it on YouTube. I never wanted to sing it because it was from Wildcat, which was my mother's only Broadway show. And it's sort of like her theme song they play every place she goes. And it's a marching band song. Why, why would I want to sing that? But we were doing a tribute to Cy Coleman. And, and I said, so what are we going to sing? What do you want to, what do you want to sing? It's like a, one of those tributes with lots of people singing. And he said, well, don't hit me. But I have a, a way of doing Hey Look Me Over you might like. I was like, oh, no, come on. And he killed me with this arrangement. It's like the first time I ever actually listened to the lyrics. So it's stuff like that that blows my mind. Blue Skies, his, his mm -hmm. arrangement of Blue Skies on my first CD, my Just In Time CD is out of this world. It's otherworldly. And, um, and he just did some great arrangements for this show, which we do with just piano at 54 Below, but we have done it with a 11 piece band and we're gonna do it again at the McCallum Theater in Palm Springs, Palm Desert, actually, uh, February 28th next year with a big band, that big band, 11 pieces. And I didn't think I'd like it with a full orchestra because I'm so used to doing it very intimate, but Ron did some arrangements that I just heard when we did it in Florida that levitated me, can I tell you? Levitated me. So. It's, he's just, what can I say? Best. Anyway, you want to reenact the levitation here on the Gym Master show, or you want to save <laughs> that for for the concert? <laughs> I don't think I can do it without that 11 piece band and that arrangement. Oh, that, that would do it. It's, you got to hear the sound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I should stop talking about him. Somebody's going to steal him from me. I was going to say, huh? He's not that good. I'm just kidding. He's a friend, and I like to say nice things. Yeah. About him. <laughs> Fair to Midland. He's still working his uh, 
yeah. <laughs> honing his chops. <laughs> and then, so you've got these concerts that are coming up, which everybody is ecstatic about, and the tickets are selling fast. So I'm going to show people how they can get tickets. Um, and then some you time, right? Some family time, some you time to do some other things that you're thinking about, right? And that's that's not always something that you've always had in your busy no. life and busy career and everything and, and family and all. Um, you're looking forward to that, huh? I am, actually. I always love working, but because I canceled a lot of things from my leg, I ended up with about three months before the new year with nothing on my calendar except PT and <laughs> cooking dinner and taking care of my grandson. So I thought it was a good time to go back into my now newly air conditioned garage and go through the archives. And I'm, I am going to write something. I'm saying it out loud. I don't know whether it's three little things or one big thing or what, but I'm, I'm going to put my ideas out and write an outline and see what there is to see. And I'll use that time to do that. And I'm committing to it right now. So hold me to it, public. We are going to hold her to that because we have a graphic specifically when announcements like that are made and it's called a JMS exclusive. Ah, okay. Now <laughs> you, I'm stuck. Now she's stuck. Now she's got to put pen to paper. And <laughs> well, you've been, you know, you've been busy with so much going on as well. And of course, of late, which everybody knows. In the recent couple of years, there's been all of the attention on your mother and father with all the different specials and tributes and all the right. different things that have happened. And, and that's been quite a, that still is, is so beautiful and so amazing, the, the continued affection that people yeah, have please. for, I mean, their mom and dad to you, uh, but iconic figures all the way around. Yeah, it's, it's been wonderful to watch the response and to see the work that Amy Poehler and uh, Whitehorse and Imagine, Ron Howard's company did with the documentary that they did. The documentary hadn't really been made on them since I did mine that you so kindly mentioned, 93. And uh, it was just spectacular what the work that they did using a lot of the stuff that I gave them to look through and everything, but it was beautiful. And the film, uh, with Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem, I thought was a wonderful film, just very entertaining. Not all of it is true, but some of the stuff with my mother and my father was pretty accurate. Some of the relationships between the writers, Jess Oppenheimer and my mother, that was all, they made up a lot of drama that didn't really occur. But that's what movies are. And that's what Aaron Sorkin kept saying, you know, like, I really don't care so much about reality. I like just to make drama. So there you go. When you work with uh, geniuses, you have to sort of, you know, go with what they do, I guess. And you had mentioned uh, the longevity of, of course, I Love Lucy, and they were responsible for so much more. I mean, I love Mothers-in-Law with Kay Ballard and mm -hmm. uh, Eve Harden. I mean, that your father mm -hmm. produced so yeah. many incredible things. But the uh, it was the writing and the casting and the people that uh, came together that just and those situations that we all today can relate to the craziness of life so many people were going especially during the last couple of years to things that made them feel comfortable and safe yeah. and and comedies like i love lucy here's lucy the lucy mm -hmm. show and, and the dick van dyke show and all of them we had a lot of guests that have come through that have been a part of those different series and uh people really still need that kind of material because it just makes you feel good and you can relate to it. They were ahead of their time. Yeah, well, laughter is truly the best medicine. And for whatever is ailing you or whatever you're going through at the time, belly laughing, even smiling changes, you know, your adrenaline and things. And it's great to for relaxation. Stress will kill you. So it's it's lucky to be related to people who brought so much joy and laughter to the world. And, you know, they're not the only ones, but um, I am very proud to be a part of that legacy. Too, uh, so much has happened in our world, you know, in, in recent uh, years. How have you been? How are you doing? And, uh, you know, sometimes you you wake up and you think, you watch the news and uh, what you saw today was the ultimate in ever, any situation. And then you wake up tomorrow and it's topped by uh, more interesting headlines. 
Yeah. You don't want to get talking political, I hope, because I'll be here all night. <laughs> She's good. <laughs> I mean, we're in a very precarious. Did she world. bit her lip? Did you see her actually bite that bottom lip? No. We, <laughs> we are in a in a scary place right now. To, if you want to get yeah. serious for a minute, yeah. A lot of people are saying it, but it's not a joke. Our democracy and our way of life as we know it is on the line. I hate being political. I don't. My mother told me never talk about politics. She doesn't even want me to vote. Because years ago, if you saw the movie, they thought she was a communist because her grandfather told her to, you know, check that box when she was 21 years old. So I understand as a as a person with a name and some sort of celebrity, you have to be careful what you are for and against. They've always told me that because you'll alienate people who won't come to your shows. I don't care. I don't care if I alienate those kinds of people. They're they're not thinking straight. They wouldn't get my show. Do you know what I'm saying? They don't need to be at my show. Um, I want compassionate people and people who care about other people to be around me. And these people aren't thinking right. And they're going to be the ones who drill a hole in our boat. And then we're going to go, you see, you see, and then they're going to go, oh, we, uh, we thought he was, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Really? because you weren't listening, you weren't paying attention, no one could talk to you. So that's what I think right now. And it's it's time, it's time that people like me stop being silent, stop being polite all the time and speak up. If you think that, speak up, say so, because if you don't, we're gonna be Ukraine in two seconds, you know? And Well, if you weren't passionate and you weren't concerned and you didn't care, you wouldn't. You would just be there in the beautiful home in Palm Springs and dusting off the Emmys and that's it and saying, okay, we're good. But you've always been very passionate and uh, and I think that's a beautiful thing about you. I noticed one of the things on the graphic, supporter yeah, of seen. Doors of Change. We had uh, some of the folks from them on the show as a guest. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about them and your involvement. It's a great organization. It is. Jeffrey Sitkoff, he created yeah. this wonderful organization out of um, Southern California, close, close to San Diego, but they really take care of the whole Southern California coast. Uh, young homeless, people who are homeless who are, you know, not quite 20. There's an enormous population of people who, for, for one reason or another, have found themselves on the street. I would say about 85, 90% of them are because they did, came out to their folks and said, you know, I'm gay or I'm bi or whatever, and their folks kicked them out didn't care that they are now starving on the street. Don't care. They think that by doing that, somehow they will shock them into changing. You know, it's not like an addict where you do tough love and you can't come into my house as long as you're doing drugs. It's not the same thing, people. And so these kids uh, have it really, really rough. And if you don't get to them in the first couple of years, they could be in that situation majority of their life and die on the street. So Jeffrey started this wonderful organization called Doors of Change, and we have one mutual friend, Harlan Bowl, who is a, oh, uh, yeah. do you know Harlan? You hope sure. you know Harlan. Absolutely, He's yeah. a public relations manager. He sent a lot of wonderful folks our way, yeah. Wonderful. That's He's great. connected with only great people. And he called me and he said, I do some pro bono work for this organization called Doors of Change. And he sent me a couple of links, you know, so I can look at what they do. And, and he said, they need a spokesperson. They need somebody who is passionate about the subject so that they can get people to, to listen. And you know how it is if you have a celeb or somebody and you say, well, I can bring you Lucy Arnaz or whatever. Uh, they'll say OK to the interview. Otherwise, they might not have talked to Jeffrey himself because he's just Jeffrey, you know. So I was happy to use my name in that way. And I educated myself about the organization and have met with them several times. Um, and we've done a ton of press for it, and I think it's helping. They've raised so much money to do good in the last few years, and the most important thing is that they've 100 to 300 people off the streets this year, and actually got better during the pandemic, even though they couldn't do what they normally do. The thing that attracted me mostly to it was that they got to these kids um, by offering them arts and music. Mm. Some learn how to play a guitar, Want to go to an art class? Doesn't cost you anything if you want to. Here, here's the come down and we'll give you a sandwich and you can do that. 
And then they found out while they're there, and, and once the kids started to trust them that they didn't want anything from them, they really meant they were just going to give them arts and stuff, uh, the kids would open up and they'd say, you know what I really need? I, I, I need a computer or I need a driver's license or whatever. And they help them get it. Okay, let's go get that for you. And that's what they do. They really take care of these homeless uh, youth. So I'm very, very happy to be associated with, with that. That is so fantastic. Doors of Change. com. It's a great name. The, hom thing. Hmm? the homeless problem is extraordinary uh, all across uh, the country. It is. It's extraordinary. You know? it's, it's, it's very bad here in Palm Springs because we have nice weather, and uh, it's more comfortable than being homeless, you know, in Utah. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, I'm very aware of it, and every time I can do something that I think will make a difference, I try to I try to do that. What have you not done, Lucy Hernandez, that you still want to do? I mean, have you been bungee jumping, skydiving, rollerblading? You're not going to see me bungee sculpt, jumping. Sculpting. <laughs> I don't care about any of that. Rollerblading, I'm done with all those things, I think. You know? Yes. Me, Gardening. I'm, do you I'm like always, to work in the yard there at the house? I love my yard. Yeah. I love my yard. I love cooking. But the only thing I haven't attempted, and I, as I said, I think I'm going to start is as I'm going to. I've always been a writer. Yeah. I've always written a journal, and I've written I used to have a magazine column and I've written for books and done lots of forewords for things. And I like to write. I think I'm a pretty good writer, uh, but I've never had the time to go back through my own world and say, what if this wants to talk to people, you know, and I'm going to do that. That's what I'm organizing right now before I forget. Before I get so before I get to a place where I go, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if it's a book about my life growing up and show business in general, or if it's two or three things. As I'm going through my papers and boxes and boxes and boxes of my mother and dad's things over the years, I take notes, you know, and I think, wow, there's a lot of interesting trivia and a lot of heartfelt stuff that I could talk about here. So I don't know what it's going to be about, but I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know what you did? Well, yeah, in Lucy's words, you know what you did was release all of those uh, recordings, the tapes that your yeah. mother had, mm -hmm. uh, which was an extraordinary, that must have been a very arduous process to gather it all and to do it and assemble it. But uh, what a beautiful treasure that was to find, huh? Yeah, it sure was. Well, I always knew that we had, it was called Let's Talk to Lucy and uh, it was a show that she did in the early 60s for a couple of years on CBS radio. And we I knew we had tapes of it somewhere, but I didn't really know much about it. I didn't even know the list of guests that she had, even though I was one of them at one point. Right. Uh, and then when they were doing the documentary, Amy Poehler's group wanted access to a lot of stuff that I have. And we were going through lists of places of what's in storage and yada, yada. And I said, oh, hey, you know what? I have these, I don't even know what's on this. Let me go check. And I went down this rabbit hole Oh my God. So she used a little bit of it because there's portions of her talking about her life. But more than that, I got a wonderful agent and Judy Pastore and I, she made one phone call to Sirius XM and they went, we want that right now. And so they made this podcast that came up and was nonstop all day long for like three weeks where we put one show after the over 200 shows and sh unedited just as they were with whoever she was talking to, Frank Sinatra and, you know, Dean Martin and Dick Van Dyke and unbelievable Carol Burnett, Barbara Streisand. And then I had this idea to connect up with that, that I should have my mother's voice asking some of the same questions, but to today's in interesting people. And I did. I called up the Bette Midlers and the, you know, the Nicole Kidmans and all kinds of, I mean, we did like 40 different interviews and had mom ask them and them answer the question as if, you know, they were back with her then. That was cool. So those are still available. If you go on Sirius XM, it's Let's Talk to Lucy. And I'm sure they're archived and probably a YouTube or something now, but they're still out there. And we're still um, seeing that people are downloading them. They're downloadable podcasts now. And it's, um, it's thrilling. And I got a lot more of that stuff. I mean, I have her teaching classes and talking about her life and just haven't had an opportunity to go through all of that yet, but, uh, but I will. 
we uh, we did a little special not that long ago with uh, Carol Burnett's 90th birthday and Harvey yeah. Corman's son, Chris, was on and some of the dancers and actors who were on the show with her. Um, a, a wonderful dear friend of your mom's, of yours as well. Um, 90, an incredible talent. I, I, I had an opportunity to meet her a couple of times and just I've always told everybody, like I have when I tell them about you as well, Real, funny, authentic, no ego, no airs about you, about Carol. There's just these select people. Florence Henderson was another gem of a person when you would mm -hmm. talk to her. Real deal, no airs. And, and that's refreshing. Um, you had said something recently, which I thought was such a beautiful thing, was I'm sure, because I was, I, I'm sure a lot of people were, when they were watching the special on NBC, they were probably like, where's Lucy Arnaz? Lucy Arnaz should be there. She should be a part of the special, but you didn't want to make it about your mother per se, because if you, you were know there, that? Can I tell you that I have by, I think you just, I think you posted or you said it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it's such a beautiful thing because, you know, you didn't, you wanted it really to be focused on Carol. And, uh, I know that all her entire career, and I've been responsible for it several times, people have had to come to her and ask her to be a part of us. Celebrate Lucy, uh, Lucille Ball special, uh, Lucille Ball home movies, uh, blah, 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 the documentary, whatever. It's constant. And people yeah. always come to me and go, can you get Carol Burnett to do this? Even the let's talk to Lucy thing, I call <laughs> Carol. Did she do it? Yes, she did it. So, and it always becomes a different thing. Thing because she is the reigning queen of comedy that is with us today, Carol Burnett. And she has respected and looked up to my mother, who was her like big sister, you know. And I don't, I wanted that night to be about her. And I was afraid if I was there, it would be more about my mom. And if I wasn't there, they would probably only use like one half of a second of a clip. And that's all they did use. And I was like, yay. So bizarrely enough, I turned it down. I said, no, I don't, I don't think I can do that. And I called, Carol knows why. I, she knows I didn't just say I don't want to be on it. I just thought it was better if I'm not. And I used some excuse with them like, oh, my leg, my knee, I can't travel. But really, it's, I just, I wanted it to be about Carol. So if you were on it, what would you say about Carol Burnett? They wouldn't let me. <laughs> you can say what it I here. Mean, no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me though. I know how those TV shows go. They write uh, all the stuff that you say. And it's, yeah. I've done a bunch of these, you know, like I did the Mark Train Mark yeah. Award for Carol Burnett, right? Right. Yes. It was all about all about my mom. Yes. It wasn't about me, what I want to say to Carol. Right. So if I want to say something to Carol, I'll go say it to her to her face, you know. I like myself. that. Yes. Um, they would have it would have been about something they wrote about my mother and the show and da, 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 da. I, I just didn't need to do that. But um, if I, when I, and I know I've said it to her a million times, I'm so incredibly grateful for what I've learned from her and how she's always been so generous to me when I needed something and information or for her to work with me on something. She treats me like I'm a second daughter, you know, or something. And I have always loved her. She was a huge inspiration for me loving the musical theater because when I was about eight, uh, we were in New York. My mother was doing a Broadway show. So I said, Wildcat, right? And it was the same year uh, that Carol was doing Once Upon a Mattress on Broadway. And so I got a chance to see that show with her in it. And it I'll never forget that night. It was the same year I saw Carol Burnett in Once Upon a Mattress. I saw Robert Preston in The Music Man and... Patty Duke in Miracle Worker with Anne Bancroft. It was astounding. And I think because of that one year and those performances that I thought, that's what I want to do. This is what I, I came home and I immediately started making up plays and putting on, you know, buying Broadway show cast albums and things. And um, so she's been an inspiration to me for a really long time. Plus she was a guest star on the Here's Lucy show many times. We had a chance to sing and dance together. We've performed together a lot. And the first time I ever did a really important tap number, she introduced it, you know? And so I adore the woman. She's been great to me forever. And I try to send her those flowers on her birthday now because she, right. she 
My mother died on Carol Burnett's birthday for the yeah. two people out there who don't know that already. Right. And yeah. um, it was a, a sentimental story that that same day, those flowers still arrived. And of course, because my mother's so well organized, she had it all planned like three days before. But um, yeah, I adore the woman and she knows it. Wasn't it Vivian Vance that really sort of uh, encouraged you to do what's in your heart, which was theater? She, well, it was, it was more like um, I had started out making up shows in my backyard and, and then went to a high school that had a wonderful dramatic department. And my mother sort of sidetracked me and put me on a television show, which was great experience, right? Um, but so I was doing that. And then I got into doing that and I didn't look up. I was just doing that. And Vivian Vance was the guest star every year. And one year she said to me, so what do you do on your vacation, on your hiatus, right? What do you do then when you're off? I go, oh, well, well you know, we go to Hawaii. Sometimes we go down to Mexico. But she goes, what, what? You're a theater person, honey. Yeah. Get back to the stage as much as you can. You go, you start auditioning. You go, you can do a whole two plays in the time you go. Oh, I didn't, I didn't have a clue how to do that. So I didn't even have an agent. You know, I had my mother saying, this is what we're going to pay you. And, yeah. <laughs> and so I made sure I got somebody to guide me and I started auditioning. And pretty soon I had my first equity job. I played Sally Bowles in Cabaret and San Bernardino Civic Light Opera. And then I did the John Kenley circuit and did Once Upon a Mattress and um, did Little Abner, you know, played Daisy May and Little Abner that if you will and um it one thing led to another and i got the national tour of seesaw i quit the here's lucy show and i never looked back again i was in the theater suddenly i was doing that and uh annie get your gun at jones beach which led to their playing our song boom done so thank you vivian for reminding me that if i get stuck in having a nice cushy little life on tv which it's pretty cushy i gotta tell you i was having a really good time and the pay is good and the hours are terrific at least on that show they were we had vacation time didn't have to get up at the crack of dawn we had an audience live audience it was perfect yes. did you and your brother take acting lessons i always wondered about that because you guys were terrific and so natural of course you're working with your mother and, and gail mm -hmm. gordon and all but still it, it was so natural well, I like to say that doing what I'm, I'm not kidding when I say I, I picked a great high school. Immaculate Heart High School was known for its drama department, and they taught us well, at least about theater. There's not a movie class there. I'm in high school, you know, but it was for theater. I got a very good education in theater. Then being on her show was a terrific education. And I would like to say, yes, I got acting lessons because I learned from the most amazing people ever. Take a look at the list of guest stars we had on that show every week. A ridiculous, insane amount of talented people. So I watched and I learned, I listened, I learned from the best. I learned from the people who were not so great and blamed other people and didn't show up knowing their lines. And, you know, oh, I learned from that too, that that's not a way to work. The whole show goes to pot when that happens. And then I meant to go, you know, I, I, my plan, if she hadn't put me on the show, was to go to Northwestern study drama and then hope I had a career, but it didn't work out that way. I got a career because I was lucky enough to have a mother with a show that she could put me on. And uh, and Vivian to remind me to go back to theater. And then I just auditioned and I just kept working. And I was lucky that because of the show, I had a little bit of a TV name. So mm. that helped certainly, you know, if I was sort of good, not great, but sort of good. Yeah. Chances are they're going to cast you because they want to name a, you know, somebody from a TV show, that's still true. But um, I was very fortunate because my husband and I have been working in the theater almost entirely in the theater, except for a few little, you know, he's done way more movies than I have. And, uh, I, I, we've each done a couple of little TV shows, but we have made a living uh, and raised five kids on theater people's salaries, which is kind of amazing. We never quit. Um, my parents never loaned me any money except one year when I, I got myself into hot water and had two properties at once. And I wanted to buy this one and I hadn't sold that one. And both Larry and I went to our mothers and asked for money. And we asked for the same amount of money from both of them. And my mother gave it to us with interest. <laughs> 
And his mother gave it to us and it was like all the money she had. And uh, we paid it back within a year. And that's the only time I've ever had to do something that wasn't came out of my pocket, you know? Yeah. And I'm proud of that. You know, there was something that was very moving and, and I saw it on something recently and I think we even have it on tape. It was when uh, your mom was honored by, I think she was inducted the very first time that they did the Television Academy Hall of Fame and uh, Cara Burnett was there and everybody was already there. Uh, Carol introduced that segment. Yeah. She introduced that segment. It aired mm -hmm. on NBC, mm -hmm. 1980, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Gary Morton there. Um, and you were in New York because you were, you know, in the midst of a performance and they had you do this fabulous piece in, in one of the, you know, rehearsal rooms. Yeah. My mother, the star. My mother, the star. Uh, that, that is such a moving and, yeah. and the way you did it was so incredible. Mm -hmm. And then you saw her, she couldn't even, yeah. you know. That was a very touching it's very, thing. It's a very nice moment on the screen. And I'm really glad I got an opportunity to be asked to do it. It was very classy. And I like you, yeah. I love Lucy. You yes, know my, it. You know my I thing. love Lucy too. That, I mean, that's just like that knocks you out. It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it was really a very special moment. And you know, you guys your whole family, you've shared so much of yourselves with the world. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. You have your private lives, you have your moments and, but you've done it and you've done it with such grace and class and humor and wit. And uh, it, it, it's, how can this not thank, you know, a Lucy Arnaz and, and everybody involved. It just really, uh, you Thank know. you, Jim. I appreciate you saying that. It has been a bit of a tightrope, you know, to just be your own person. And there's always going to be this, I, I want to say shadow, but shadow sounds dark. Um, sunlight, let's call it, let's call it a backlighting. There's always been a little backlighting. A light mist. <laughs> a light mist around me because of them. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing at all. Uh, I could be related to, you know, Jack the Ripper. It wouldn't be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm related to two people who did wonderful things on the planet. And I'm very grateful that I had that to look up to. I think we all pick where we're coming down to yeah. anyway. I think we right. have something to say about that. And uh, for whatever challenges it provides. Uh, so it's part of our curriculum. We're going to learn something that we thought we wanted to learn. And uh, that's why we put ourselves in this particular position, even though sometimes we forget that this was what we asked to do. And we, why am I here? Like, this is really hard. But I think it was a choice. And I'm, and I'm glad I made it. Yes, it was a beautiful choice. And we're glad you made it, too. Here is the uh, there is the image for the actual event coming up. As I mentioned, though, it's kind of cool is the Saturday performance on July 22nd. And there you can go to 54 Below, artists, Lucy Arnaz. Uh, they're going to also live stream the show. Yes, indeed. They're live Saturday. streaming. I've never done that before. On the closing night, July 22nd, it's going to be live streamed. And, and I was torn about whether to do that or not. I was like, oh, I don't know. And uh, But I thought about it, and I thought, you know, there's a lot of people who have always said to me, God, I wish I could get over there to see your show, but I live in Australia, you know, whatever. And this way they can, like they can actually see the show for not that much money, actually, because it's a live stream and yet they can't tape it. They can't share it. It isn't like it's going to get out there and, you know, just be you doing your show everywhere. So I'm excited about that. And closing nights are usually great fun because it's going to be really closing night for me. So I'm not going to be doing my show after that for quite a while. So it's going to be a wonderful show, I think. It's going to be fantastic. Yes, uh, that's when I'll be there on that night. So oh, good. yes, we will be there and with bells on and really looking forward to it. You like playing that venue, 54 Below? I love 54 Below. It's got a great sound system. The First of all, all the audiences in New York are savvy, smart. They get the jokes, you know. Yes. It's always, it's always, I was sort of scared years and years ago about, oh, New York audiences are going to be so tough. They're going to be so, you know, object. They're not going to be objective. They're just going to, they've seen too much entertainment. They're not like that at all. 
New York audiences are the best ever. They're just great. And there are people from all, you know, it's not just everybody living in New York. They're from everywhere. But uh, it's there's nothing like it. There's really nothing like playing a New York club. And uh, it's a first class place. And they're they're very strict. You know, the show starts on time. You have to finish on time. They have another show coming in at nine o'clock. So it's in and it's out. I won't be able to spend a lot of time in the lobby kissing and signing CDs, A, because it's COVID and I don't kiss people right now. <laughs> but B, I just hustle, Larry. hustle you out of there really fast, you know, so, but I look forward to seeing anybody who'd like to come see that show uh, July 19th through the 22nd. And like you said, uh, we're going to live stream it on the 22nd. So that'd be fun. It's so good that uh, you're back out. You're going to be doing it. And uh, yeah, we've held on when they called and they said, what do you want to do? Do you want to, you want to hang on to the tickets uh, when she does it next year? Where we're like, absolutely. What are you crazy? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, thoroughly looking forward to it. You are a delight, my friend, truly just yeah. a great conversationalist. Thank you. you. Really, your stories are spectacular and I love having you stop by. Really, I'm always honored by it. You're you're always such a trooper and we will keep the porch light on for you. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in about a month from now and happy anniversary. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. That's so great. You know, we it's toast you and Larry. 43 years. Can you imagine? I've been there. Isn't that something? Years. I'm only 49. How is this possible? I know. And you were a brunette, weren't you? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to bring. Now that poster, I love that poster, but you know, this is my COVID cut and color. It's fantastic. You know, everybody happened. loves it, right? It had to happen during the pandemic. I couldn't go get it colored. You know, hello people. I'm not going to pretend I had roots coming out of here. And I thought, okay, I cut it myself and I cut it down to where it was. I thought, no one's going to see me anyway. I'm just going to let it grow out and see what happens. I kind of like it. I kind of so like it. It's those Latin roots, but I'm bummed. Yeah, <laughs> they are my Latin roots. We never know. A person could go back. Trouble I think it looks fantastic. Everybody loves it, right? Does it, does it matter that my poster doesn't look like my hair? Your eyes you are even, the same. You don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> you mean this hair? Boom. That hair and the other hair in the poster, the, the Lucy Arnaz Ron Abel poster. See, those are all those wonderful Michael Childers shots that we did this great. See, now there we're in, there I yes, am in the show. I'm not changing it. Versus that one there. Well, that's yeah. a whole, well, now those are, that was a few years ago. That's a great, you know. You, Thank you. That shot, you looked so content and I happy <laughs> and light. You know what I mean? You, you like light. Well, you, know, you never know what what character that was from. Like, I don't even know what song that is, but. I'm in character because I'm singing songs from the shows that I was in. And then you get to be that person again for a song or so. It was great fun. Anyway. That's beautiful stuff. Pleasure talking to you, my friend. Pleasure talking to you. Now you're going to stretch a little bit or? Yes, I'm going to start <laughs> to walk. Lift a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Actually, I got to leave you and cook dinner for Larry. That's <sighs> What are you making? In this kitchen, right? There. That kitchen right there, that beautiful. Yeah. What are you going to make? I'm going to make this. Uh, oh, I forgot to take the chicken out. It's all still. <laughs> uh, it looks like tuna sandwiches on toast, Larry. <laughs> you can defrost stuff in a microwave, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I'll take it. Uh, I'll take them out before we do this interview. And I kind of forgot to do that. So <laughs> that happens. We better let you go so you can eat tonight I gotta, at I a decent hour. Uh, can <laughs> you make a quick grilled cheese now. sandwich maybe? Or... <laughs> Sorry, Larry. <laughs> it's going to be a lovely chicken and prunes and artichoke the onions thing I make. But we'll Larry, see. you get her every day. We got her for an hour or so. Yeah. <laughs> She'll make it up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I will. You're the best, Lucy. We Thank love you. you. Thank we'll you so see much. you in a few weeks in New York. Happy thanks anniversary. You. And again, thanks so much for stopping by. You're welcome here anytime. And I hope you enjoy the time with me as much as I have with you. Been wonderful. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You take care and be well, okay? I will. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye now. The incomparable Lucy Arnaz, who's going to go scramble up something in the kitchen right now for Larry. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be chicken tonight. <laughs> Chicken's a little frozen. <laughs> I mean, uh, she could throw it in the microwave oven, but, you know, then it'll be a rubber chicken. 
Uh, there's a whole thing there. Maybe they'll have some tuna melts or something quick. Uh, we thank Larry, who's been keeping the phones clear. <laughs> there's probably 900 voicemails, uh, but um, isn't she a delight? Always a pleasure to have her on the show. She's, like I said, you know, the, I, I, I think I was calculating in my career, interviews are just one of the things I've done, but I've probably chatted with about 6,000 people, you know, with my work on PBS, of course, over the years as a host and everywhere else, and then creating this show. And Lucy's one of my favorites. Uh, she's just the real deal. She's, it's like a wonderful tennis match. The back and forth is so automatic, effortless. It's so easy. It's so fun. You can almost like finish each other's sentences to a degree and know where the other one is going. And, um, with a humor, obviously you could see her quick wit. Um, and she's a, a multi-talented person with a big heart. She, as she expressed, she believes in causes that matter. She believes in making the place, you know, the room better than she found it, making our world a better place. And she does that not just through the years of entertainment and being on television and film and stage and Broadway and all these performances and concerts, but being a, a kind-hearted person, uh, you know, helping out in a charitable way, helping out causes that she believes in. And that's that's a person that goes the extra mile. Again, like I said, she could be there in that beautiful, expansive home, looking at the mountains in Palm Spring, dusting off the awards, you know, just enjoying defrosting the chicken. <laughs> She likes to be connected. She's an entertainer. She's a performer. She's a kind-hearted soul. And uh, aren't we blessed to have an opportunity to chat with her here on the show in such a free-form way? We don't do pre-scripted questions. I don't even call these really interviews. I call them conversations because that's my style anyway. And you guys know that. And it's just been absolutely a blast. So we're going to show you again for those of you who are in the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Tri-State area, or... If you're anywhere around the world and you want to see that concert event, the uh, final evening, which is July 22nd, they're going to do a live stream, uh, which means, of course, we won't be doing an episode of the Gym Master Show because I will be there <laughs> in New York at 54 Below. Uh, but it's uh, the 19th through the 22nd, and it is going to be it's going to be fantastic. So if you've seen her before, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you've never seen her in concert before, get the tickets, get to uh, the Big Apple, enjoy. 54 Below is a fantastic place. You know, they have food and cocktails and things of that nature available as well. It's sort of intimate in the way that it is designed. A lot of incredible performers, uh, performers come through 54 Below. Matter of fact, it's like right next door to where Studio 54, the famous disco, existed in the 70s. That's where the 54 sort of comes from. Um, it's quite a place, really is uh, quite a place. So that's where she's going to be. And we're so happy that uh, she stopped by the Gym Master Show Live series. Now, you guys have been commenting throughout. And we're going to take a quick look. You guys know I'm a very interactive host. Let's take a look at some of the comments that have been coming in from our viewing audience around the world. And if you ever want to comment when the show is on, certainly uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and you can do that. Don't forget to give this episode a like, leave a comment for us on the YouTube channel. We would appreciate that. She's real, she's open, she's honest. She's a good soul. Like our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Subscribe to that channel by hitting that button there. It's a red button. On some pages, it's a black button. It says subscribe. And you can access almost a thousand episodes of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series. Guests coming in from Hollywood, television, stage, film, music, Broadway, actors, actresses, authors, health and wellness gurus. Um, so many incredible folks we have from all walks of life, experts in their various fields, celebrity friends stopping by. So give this episode a thumbs up, leave a comment for us, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and let's check out some of the comments that are coming in. Also, again, just want to show you this graphic, which is the show, I Got the Job, songs from my musical past. And as I mentioned, this was on Broadway when she was in Pippin. 
we've got this photo, which I love. And then we have another one actually where my mother is with us as well. She got a chance to meet Lucy actually on a, several occasions. We have a lot of mutual friends in the industry as she is just a solid person. This is at the Catherine Hepburn Performing Arts Center, um, which again is another fabulous place. She performed there. She's a dear person. I wanted to show this. I forgot to show this while she was on, but we had a guest on our show who is a brilliant illustrator, animator, Henry Lamar. Did you see that episode when Henry, Henry Lamar was on the show? Look at this beautiful shot. Um, this is the work of Henry Lamar. And this is, and there is his autographed right there. This is Lucy Arnaz. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful illustration of her caricature? Absolutely fantastic. So spot on that Henry Lamar, the brilliant caricaturist, illustrator, animator, designer. He was a guest on our show. Go back in the archives. You'll see a lot of photos similar to that because we go through them on the episode. And of course, there is another brilliant talent actor, producer extraordinaire, Larry Luckabell, her husband of 43 years. That's so cool that it's their 43rd wedding anniversary. We wish, wish them nothing but many more years of good health, humor, and wedded bliss. And of course, which we talked about a little bit. And if you want to see the other episode when Lucy Ornez was our guest on the Gym Master Show, that's archived on our YouTube channel as well. We even chatted about her uh, fabulous parents, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, which is extraordinary. And um, yeah, so, and uh, I wanted to just share my feel. I've told this to Lucy off air too. I just wanted to share, you know, how so many of us feel about her family and just all that they've given of themselves to entertain all of us. You know, it's not easy when you're in the public eye and you have the world, you know, at your doorstep and uh, it's a beautiful thing, but sometimes, you know, it can be crazy times too. So uh, they have the whole family, Desi and Ernest Jr. I mean, everybody is just given so much of their, of themselves and Desi is doing well, as she mentioned and um, really cool stuff. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the comments we have here and, um, Sherry Larson here, one of our JMS Lovety viewers here in America. Good to see you, Sherry. And Eric Levitt in the house. Hello, Jim. Love from Culver City, California, SoCal, LA area. Ms. Patton, Texas here. Good to see you, Ms. Patton, Texas. Our viewing audience comes from all around the world. And this is your first time watching the Jim Master Show Live series we welcome you. Thanks so much for being here. We invite and welcome you to continue to watch our series. If you ever want to support our content, you can do a super chat, super emoji, super sticker in the Lovety Hall chat room while the show is on live. But some people ask, how do we support even when the shows aren't on live? You can easily do that. We don't even need this anymore. Uh, you can easily do that with a, there's a little heart icon underneath all of the episodes and it looks like a heart and it's uh, called Super Thanks. And if you click that, that's a way you can support the Gym Master Show series as well. So in the chat section, there's Super Chat, Super Emoji, Super Stickers. And then 24-7, 365, when the shows are not even on live and you're watching even an archived show, you can do Super Thanks, all kinds of good stuff. So taking a look at... Uh, Oh, Mary Ann is here. Mary Ann, so good to see you. Lapinto, she's wonderful. Big fan of the Gym Master Show live series. It's so good to see you, Mary Ann. And um, you love, of course, Lucy, and you love her mom, Lucille Ball, of course, one of your favorites of all time. Tommy Reed is here. Tommy, good to see you. Good evening, lovely family. Great host, Mr. Kim. <laughs> Kim, I think that's my clone. I know what you mean. Jim Masters, and hello to your guest, our guest, the comparable Lucy Arnaz. And I also want to let you know, before we take a look at more of the fabulous comments that are coming in here, those comments that are coming in, I want to let you know that we've got another incredible guest. We now have another iconic guest tomorrow, multi-million selling, the one and only 
incomparable American pianist Danny Wright is with us tomorrow. Yes, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live. He's going to perform live. He has sold millions and millions of albums and songs. His music is all over the radio. A lot, of course, predominantly instrumental. He's got beautiful Christmas albums out as well. I have a lot of his material in my collection, New Age and so much more. He's extraordinary. He does all different genres. Danny Wright is with us tomorrow on the Jim Masters Show live series. We welcome the one and only Lucy Arnaz. Uh, we thank her, that is, for stopping by. Actress, singer, producer, Emmy-winning producer, Lucy Arnaz. Check her out at a show. She's fantastic. Really, really is. Check some of those uh, comments coming in here, and then we are going to wrap for this episode. And again, we're very interactive, so we like to see some of the feedback that's coming in. Even if it was a while ago, we're going to try to scroll through as much as we can. And Jane had said, welcome back, Lucy. Thank you very much. Jane's watching in Sweden. Merlin in Canada says, welcome. Love it, tea. Lucy. Lucy is certainly a love of tea. And uh, Marianne says, this is a fabulous show. So great. She's doing it again. And Ron Abel is fabulous. Yes, he is. Yes. She is having fun up there and we have a great time. Absolutely. And yes, Pippin was terrific. Lucy and Desi were amazing. Yes. Her parents, of course. Kathleen in New York City. Hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. And of course, amazing. Hello to you, Kathleen. Welcome back, Lucy. Yeah, this is Lucy Arnez's return visit. Absolutely. Yes, that's right. And Seesaw, you mentioned that in the introduction. She sure did. Sherry Larson welcomes her. Maureen said, you had the honor of meeting Lucy in Palm Springs back in January 2020 after seeing Eric Bergen, she is a gracious, beautiful lady, isn't she? And a dear friend, and we love having her a part of the equation. Welcome back, Lucy. This is from Eric. Welcome back, Lucy. Love from Culver City, California, SoCal area, LA area. Nice to meet you. Sherry Larson says, happy anniversary. We love that. 43-year anniversary for Lucy Arnaz and Larry Luckenbill. Isn't that great? Happy anniversary. Everybody wishing Lucy and Larry happy anniversary. Why don't we put that photo of the two of them up there? There you go. While we show these wonderful happy anniversaries. You look fabulous, Lucy. That's so great. Steve Kalinich, Steve, good to see you as well. I love Lucy. Stevie, she's a great soul. Say hello the last time I saw her at Billy's Memorial. She's very kind and talented. Love Steve Kalinich. And Steve's going to be a return guest on our show next week. We can't wait. Jane says, happy anniversary to Lucy and Larry. Eric Levitt, happy anniversary and many more. Happy anniversary from Merlin as well. This is so fantastic. Eric says, I remember Lucy and her husband, Larry, on an episode of Murder, She Wrote. And of course, remembering the beloved Angela Lansbury, who starred in that series. Rest in peace. Absolutely. You were blown away when she said that her family came over on, on her mother's side, Lucille Ball's side, on the Mayflower. Isn't that pretty cool? That's something that she shared with us here. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some more. You were happy that she recovered with the leg? Absolutely. She's golden in no time. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some more great comments here that we have coming in as we celebrate our very special guest, Lucy Arnaz. Marsha Lyon, who's in Massachusetts, USA. Hi, Jim. Welcome, Lucy, to Lovely Hall. I love your hairstyle and your color. I'm the same age as you and stopped coloring my hair a few years ago. It's so freeing. You look beautiful. I love that. 
So nice. Eric says, I have high functioning autism, had ADHD, SPD, sensory processing disorder, depression, anxiety, stress, learning disability. I love Lucy. It's helped me a lot. I love, of course, the series, one of my favorites. Good stuff. Toby here in the house as well from California. Good to see you as well. Really nice. Check a couple more here in the lovely hall chat room. Maureen says, Lucy Arnaz was absolutely fabulous in the jazz singer. Lucy, such a remarkable performance. Absolutely. Yeah, parents are legends. Yes, Lucy are a blast. Ms. Pat in Texas says, fantastic show. Thank you very much. Ms. Pat in Texas, watching the Gym Master Show live from Texas. Patty McGill here. Good to see you, Patty. Hello, Jim, and what a great show with Lucy Arnez. Pleasure is all mine. I love Eric. He says, it's nice to meet you, Lucy. We'll leave the light on for you. Love from Culver City, California, SoCal, LA area. Thanks for being here with us. Welcome back. Yes, to the Gym Master Show. He also says, happy anniversary, Lucy and Larry and many more. Kathleen says, thanks for being here, Lucy. Take care. Lots of love for Lucy. Sherry Larson says, thank you for being here tonight, Lucy. Marianne says, your mom and dad would be so proud of you, of what you've become. I still light up at Christmas time. It's a beautiful shot of her too, isn't it? And let's see. Got all kinds of icons coming in here. And uh, best of luck. All the best from Eric. Maureen in Arizona. Lucy, I wish you continued success and blessings. Hoping to get to see you at the Purple Room next season. Time for you to have dinner, Jim, and all of us to have dinner. Marianne's making a huge salad. Lucy has to dig something up <laughs> because yeah, I don't know if you tuned in late or not, but before our show, she was going to defrost the chicken and she forgot to take the chicken out. So Lucy and Larry will be having a makeshift dinner of sorts. Maybe there's some leftovers in the refrigerator. <laughs> when I see her in a few weeks, I'm going to ask her, what did you end up making that night for you and Larry when you were on the show? Oh, I just threw something together. Whatever we had, we had. Um, that is funny, right? Marianne says, uh, before Studio 54, it was Studio 52 CBS Studio. Yes, what's my line? I've got a secret. All those incredible game shows to tell the truth came from, and I spent a lot of time going to see those shows there. I, you saved your ticket. You're like me. You save a lot of things, press them in books. That's incredible. That's great, Marianne. Hope to see you again soon, too, and Marianne. And Maureen says, incredible therapy, Jim. Thank you for making my day. You, sir, are simply the best, and I appreciate you beyond words. Thank you, Maureen. And I'll keep you posted. We are going to be heading out to uh, Phoenix, Arizona at some point uh, for a television shoot, so it's going to be kind of cool. It'll actually, believe it or not, I've been all over the map, but it'll be my first time to Phoenix. So it's going to be great. I'll keep you posted. And... Um, I agree. Larry would be amazing on the show as a guest as well. He is incredible. I had the opportunity to meet him on several occasions and he's just a real delightful person as well. We really appreciate uh, Lucy stopping by the Gym Master Show Live series, her second visit. Always a delight, always a pleasure. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, certainly uh, interact with us. Leave a like on our YouTube channel. You know, uh, give this episode a thumbs up, like, drop a comment, interact with us. Let us know what you enjoyed, where you watch our shows from, what you love about the Gym Master Show Live series. Certainly let us know about all that. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to enjoy more of our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series. 
Again, there is her show. I got the job. Songs from the musical past with the musical director, Ron Abel, Lucy Arnaz. In the house on the Jim Master Show Live Series. Wonderful time. Bravo, Jim. Thank you, Marianne. Sending you love our way. Maureen says dinner on her. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. What will we have when I'm in Arizona? Marsha, it's so good to see you. Marsha and I have known each other for years through my uh, on-air work as a host on PBS. And Marsha would come in and she would answer the phones and take the PBS pledges during all kinds of specials and concerts. And Marsha and I actually have gone to New York and we saw uh, a couple of the guys from Celtic Thunder and uh, miss you too, my friend, miss you too. And hope to see you soon. We got to have lunch or something. We got to, let's connect, you know, and let's uh, get together. The world has changed so much, Marsha, hasn't it? Let's get together and share some Irishness. <laughs> all right, gang, we love you all. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for all the, uh, just being here, you know, just being here. And of course, another iconic character, George Burns is in the house as well. We love when George is here. He's always a part of our show and he sends his love with a cigar and his red pocket square. He sends all his love to all of you. This was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, share on your social media. And we'll keep working hard to uh, create what we call our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation and we're doing it interactively with all of you. And both Lucy and Desi appeared on those shows on CBS 52. Yes, they did. You as well, Kathleen. And in Sweden, it is 3.45 a.m. That's late. Bedtime for you and a snack for us. It's about 10 before 10 uh, Eastern time here in the evening. And again, if this was your first time watching our show, we thank you very much for being here. And we hope you'll stop by again. And a reminder, you can also binge watch almost a 1,000 at the time of this show today. You can binge watch almost a thousand episodes. That's a lot of episodes you can enjoy um, of our series. All right. We don't say goodbye around here. We say see you later. Ciao. Cheers. Slancha. Avita Zain. Hasta la vista. Shalom. Sayonara. Take care. Be well. Cheerio. Moy loop. You know, we showed this earlier during our three year anniversary episode of the series. Lucy Arnaz was kind enough to create a video for us um, celebrating our show and what we're doing here. And if you didn't see it, since she was a guest on our show right now, again, for a second time, which we love, we'll show you those words again. Hey, Jim, congratulations. That's quite a milestone. I've always enjoyed talking to you. You do a great show, positive, optimistic, interested, you do your homework. We love being with you, and I hope we get a chance to do it again sometime. With love from Lucy Arnaz and Larry Leckenbill. Very special. We're gonna that's a keeper. We're gonna keep that one for sure. Good stuff, gang. We love you all. Thanks for watching. Hey, come by and see us again. We love having you here. My name is Jim Masters. I'm your host and producer. We work hard to put all these great shows and all this great content together for all of you. Just taking a look. When you see me looking this way, I'm looking at more comments and all that are coming in here. Um, we thank you so very much. Truly. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. That's a wrap. Love one another. Take care of one another. And don't forget to uh, take care of yourself and love yourself. It's important to do that and share it with the world. I'll be right here waiting for you for our next episode of the Jim Masters Show. As I mentioned, somebody special tomorrow as well, the incomparable legendary Danny Wright, acclaimed, this is really incredible, multi-million selling American pianist is going to be with us. Yes, we can't wait. That's going to be, it's going to be an awesome show. He's all excited and so are we. Take care, gang. We'll see you on the next one here on the Jim Masters Show. Take care and be well. Cheers.